Queensland, Australia, record lowest February temperatures on record. Look here at the temperature gradient map. We were told it's baking into infinity in Australia, so let's look back at November. Highs, lows, wait, they forget about that in their media. So I thought let's look at daily extreme maximum temperatures. Those dark gray bars, that's Australia. That's definitely nowhere near into the extremes. And why is the media not widely talking about hail and ice summer surprise for Tasmania? Same atmospheric circulation setup as the last glaciation. And a look at the global departure from normal temperatures, even though they're showing glowing red in the Arctic, that's still minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to Adapt2030 and click that bell to get the latest updates. Now taking a look at Queensland, Australia, record lowest February temperatures on record. These were the lowest maximum temperatures ever recorded. Top temperatures upwards of 14 degrees Celsius. This is in the summer in what is considered tropical beach land across the east coast of Australia. So I pulled the maps here from Bureau of Meteorology for February 1st, 2018 on the minimum temperatures. Look how cold Tasmania is. And take a look at all the green inside there. That's only between 10 and 15 degrees Celsius. Now the media in Australia has been telling everybody that it's the bakingest hot summer ever. And that's not really true. Let's look at February 2nd and look at February 3rd and they just keep going with these colder temperatures February 4th, 5th and it's expected through the next week to stay cold like this. Now they were saying thanks in part to lingering clouds and rain. Well when you start to look at cosmic rays inducing greater cloud cover along with all the volcanoes erupting with the particulates in the atmosphere so I pulled the satellite photo and lo and behold a winter storm's on the way already at the end of summer and New Zealand's going to be pounded as well. So here we are winter storms approaching Australia at the end of summer. Who would have thought that except when you're heading into a grand solar minimum. And of course I know all the naysayers are going to come out and say you're cherry picking two days of data out of a whole year. Well let's take a look at full January temperatures, minimum temperatures. Now really, if it was supposed to be the hottest ever, you wouldn't be seeing 10 degrees or lower Celsius temperatures across the entire southern part of Australia. And look at Tasmania, and I'm going to come back to Tasmania with the snows. So let's go with the maximum temperatures. Again, if it was supposed to be the warmest ever, this is back in November. I even went further back to when this summer began, just to cover the full range from the beginning of summer, the middle of summer. Now we're at the end of summer, and we're still seeing cooler than normal temperatures. They're talking about... Australia being a complete oven the entire summer, that's just not true. This is from the BOM's site with temperature data. Unbelievable how the media is able to get away with these half-truths that they keep painting every day. November 2017, max temps. And you see that whole band all the way from Western Australia all the way up through Queensland, including Tasmania, below normal temperatures. So then I put the minimum temperature for November 2017 and what do we see again? The same thing. But look how far that band of cooler temperatures extends literally to the bottom half of the continent. So I thought okay let's look at December see what happens. Same thing cooler temperatures across that whole coastal area but it's about half the continent. And even when we're looking in up near Darwin and outback areas Western Australia still 27 degrees for the lows when they should be in the 30s for the lows at that time of the year. So then I thought, all right, there's got to be even better data. So I went through and I found a bunch of bar charts. So let's try to explain it here, interpreting the graph. So what they've done is they've taken 100 years of data and then they compiled them into the number one warmest year would be in the top 99 percentile, being 99 percent of the warmest. And then it went all the way down to 1 percent, which is the least warm or the least cold. So they've striated it out into 100 years of data and they use 100%. It's really easy to correlate this. So if it's up at 100%, that's the coldest or the warmest, depending on how you're looking at the temperature. So let's take a look at what they have. I even went a little further south because I was taking a look at those cooler temperatures down in New South Wales. So I wanted to start off with the maximum temperatures. Now this is focused on New South Wales, but if you notice embedded in the chart, it has also all of Australia combined. And this is what the media keeps telling us, that Australia was the warmest ever this summer. And it was baking. and You can do loaves of bread in your front yard. That's how hot it was, apparently, according to the Australian media. 
but remember that percentage and area above 97th percentile percent when you get up to the 100 that would be the maximum amount of heat recorded at all-time record highs but when we look at that gray bar area that's all of Australia I'd like you to take a look and see with your own eyes if you believe those are above normal temperatures or skyrocketing baking heat across the entire country Granted, January 7th, hot. 21st, 22nd, hot. But the rest of the month is not really that much above normal. So then I said, all right, let's do the inverse on this. Let's pull up the minimum temperatures. So again, to keep it even, I kept it in New South Wales. But you'll notice those gray bars seem to be jumping a bit higher, especially around the end of January, specifically from, say, the 20th forward. There's a bunch of outliers there, meaning it's getting cooler than normal. And then we have these all-time record cold. They haven't updated the information up to today. It stops back on February 2nd, so we can't really use the same bar graphic chart because the information's not updated yet. And all the time, the Australian media is just talking about how hot it is everywhere and super baking. They forgot to mention the hail and unusual summer snow ice surprise for Tasmania. Even the meteorologists were calling this very unusual that the ground is covered with ice in the Australian summer. So much snow that they wrote summer on the windshield. Now this is the third time it snowed in Tasmania this year during the summertime. So now let's take a look at the wide outlook at global temperatures. This is so far February, the first five days of February, departure from normal temperatures. Now I also want you to notice up in the Arctic, you see how it shows really red up there. You got to realize that the Arctic would be minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's minus 40 or minus 35. So then they show that it is an anomaly because, well, in actuality, it is a little bit warmer, but it's still minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not that warm like they make it appear on the charts. But notice all the blue below normal temperatures all across Asia. It even shows that same Western Australia area being below normal temperature. It shows part to the Antarctica below normal. The oceans are below normal. All the way up around Baffin Island and Greenland below normal. West Africa, the Canary Islands, Morocco, North Africa below normal. And wow, we're told it's just baking heat everywhere. Unbelievable. So let's line up. This is forecast up through February 8th. But I want you to notice that deep purple right there. And I want to take you back to the maximum glaciation 20,000 years ago. Now, the way the jet streams were flowing at that time and the way there was a blocking system that just continued and continued to force moisture into certain patterns ended up starting the glaciation. When we start to take a look at the last glacial maximum, we start to see the same areas. They pinpointed it to Baffin Island as the seed point for this, but it's just interesting how it's matching up again with what we've seen in the past. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. The media is in damage control because these temperatures globally are cooling. They are trying everything they can to keep this out of your normal, everyday waking consciousness.